I just placed it in the orange. All right, you're 11, we're starting. So our last couple of bits of this topic, we've talked about radians, we've found exact values using radians, we've solved trig equations using radians, and now there are some special formulas here that we're going to learn about that involve radians. Okay, so this is about arcs and sectors of circles. So the first formula we're talking about is the arc length formula. Now the formula for arc length is given to you right here, but there is a proof here to show you where it comes from. Okay. Everybody quiet please. So if I'm trying to find a relationship between the arc length, which is here, and the angle that is cut off by that arc, or the arc that is cutting off that, that sorry, the angle that is cutting off that arc. Then what I want to do is I want to make fractions that compare the arc length, the arc length over the whole circumference would be the same fraction or the same proportion as the angle over the total number of angles in the whole circle. Do you see how it's like an equivalent kind of fraction? Yeah, so arc length cuts off that much of a circle out of the total, which would be 2 pi r. And the theta, which also represents that much of a circle, over the 2 pi radians, that would be the whole way around the circle. Because remember, 360 degrees is 2 pi. So that's where this first part of the proof comes from. The length over the full circumference, which is 2 pi r, is equal to theta, the angle in my sector, over the total number of degrees in the circle, which is 2 pi. I should say total number of radians in the circle, 2 pi. Okay? So to rearrange that to get the L by itself, I have to times the 2 pi r up to the other side of that fraction. So it's up here on the top now. So this is the theta that was already there, and the 2 pi r has multiplied to the top. Then what will happen is a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom will cancel off. A pi on the top and a pi on the bottom will cancel off. And all that will be left is the theta and the r, or r theta, from the top of that fraction. And that is your formula. The length of the arc is equal to the radius times by the angle in that sector. That's the formula we're going to use. However, you must always remember that that angle must be measured in radians. Don't ever try to put degrees in there. Okay, so that's the first formula we're going to be using today. The proof is for those of you who like to know a little bit about where, th where, where things come from, but we don't have to memorize that, but you do need to be able to use the formula. The next formula, area of a sector. Okay, so now a sector, is like a piece of pizza, this little wedge that's been cut out of my circle, and I want to find the area of it. Okay, so again I'm going to show you where this formula comes from. The area of a sector is going to be equal to, now it's part of a circle. The formula for the area of a whole circle is the pi r squared, right? Area of a circle, pi r squared. But I don't have a whole circle, what fraction do I have? Now, in the good old days when we did things in degrees, we did theta over 360, right? That was the fraction of the circle that we had. But instead of degrees, we want it in radians, so it's going to be theta over 2 pi, because that's 360 in radians. So there's my good old fashioned theta over 360 equivalent times by my pi r squared, right? Then, a little bit of simplifying, the pi on the top, pi on the bottom will cancel out. So um, the, half, the theta just tends to get moved down to the back, so we have a half at the front, we have an r squared and the theta at the end, just kind of rearranging the letters, but all the things are still there. So the formula that we use is this one. Area is equal to half r squared theta, which again, the theta has to be in radians. Okay, one more formula that we need to know today, which is the area of a segment. Now, if the sector is the piece of pizza that is cut off here, which is the one we just found before, the segment is if we draw a line from, um, 
one edge of the arc length to the other, cutting off this triangle. The segment is this little tiny part at the side here. We're trying to find the area of that. Now the area of that little minor segment out there would be the sector that I just found minus the triangle that I no longer want. Okay? So here it is, area of a sector minus area of a triangle. The area of the sector we just found was half r squared theta. We derived that already. Minus the area of a circle that is not a right angle triangle. Sorry, I just said a circle, area of a circle. The area of a triangle that is not a right angle triangle using our trigonometry is half a b sine c. Remember that formula? Okay, so this is an adaption of the area equals half a b sine c. The a and the b are simply the radius of the circle, right? So, because there are these two sides here, that's going to be half, my a b is the radius squared, because they're both equal to the radius. And then the sine of the angle in between, and my angle, which we used to call c, is theta now. We're calling that theta. So that there is using the half a b sine c formula that we learned from trigonometry. Then if we simplify that a little bit, well to simplify that, we can factorise out some common things. We can factorise out the half, and we can also factorise out an r squared that's in both of them. If we do that, from this first term it just leaves the theta, minus, that's been taken out, that's been taken out, so the sine theta is all that's left from the second one. And we end up with this formula for our area of our minor segment. Okay, so they are our three formulas. The derivations are interesting, but will not be tested, okay, promise. So just need to be able to use them. Here are our questions. Example number one. Find the arc length of a circle with a radius of six centimeters and has an angle of pi over 3. Okay, so as soon as it says arc length, the formula that we have for arc length was L equals R theta. So do a bit of a check. Make sure that your angle is in radians. That's it, this one over here, the pi over 3. Is that in radians? Yeah. Yep, okay, so I'm going to be using that for theta. And my radius is right here. It is the 6 centimetres. So I just have to sub them in. It is 6 times pi over 3. Now, it doesn't specify this, but a lot of the times the questions will ask me to give exact answers. So I'll do that for this one. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that would simplify to be 2 pi. You could find it as a decimal as well if it didn't specify. That is the length of the arc. It would have the same units as the radius. So because this is in centimetres, that will be in centimetres and we're done. Question two. Find the arc length of a sector. So again, as soon as it says that, we're thinking L equals R theta. With a radius of five centimetres, there's my R, and an angle of 60 degrees. So as soon as we see that 60 degrees, we know that there is a little bit of a problem because our formula only uses radians. So we have to remember how to convert it. 60 degrees, to convert it to radians, you times it by pi over 180. The 60 on the top, you can divide 180 by 60 and you get three. So it simplifies to be pi over three. Okay, so now that's going to be the theta that I'm going to use, the pi over 3. And I'm ready to sub into my formula. Radius is 5, theta is pi over 3. And again, keeping it exact, the 5 divided by 3 is not going to simplify nicely. So you times the 5 to the top with the pi, 5 pi all over 3. And the units of that will be centimetres because my radius was in centimetres. Okay, question three. Find the exact area and perimeter of a sector of a circle with radius five centimetres and an angle subtended of pi over six. Okay, so 
The radius is 5, and the angle subtended is in radians, so that is going to be the theta. Um, all right, so the arc length, it does say perimeter, but to do the perimeter of a sector, or maybe I'll draw a little diagram over here, to do a perimeter of a sector, you're going to need to know that curve part, aren't you? So I need to know what that arc length is. So L is equal to R theta. My radius is 5. My angle is pi over 6. That makes 5 pi over 6 centimetres. However, to finish it off, I need to also find the full perimeter of that shape which is going to be the arc length that I just found, which was 5 pi over 6, plus 2 lots of the radius, which is 10. Okay, and again, that will be in centimetres. 5 pi over 6 plus 10 will be the perimeter of that shape. You could get a common denominator and push that together if required. The question did also ask for the area it asked for both. There was a second part to this question that said to find the area of the sector as well. So the formula for the area of a sector, I'll change colours because it's kind of like starting again. Area is half r squared theta. The radius is still 5, so half 5 squared times the theta, which is pi over 6. Okay, just subbing all the information, but into the area formula now instead. Now, to simplify that, on the top of all of those numbers, we have a 1, a 5 squared, and a pi. So the 5 squared becomes 25 pi. And on the bottom of all those fractions, we have 2 times 6, which is 12. And that fraction is not going to simplify any further. That would be centimetres squared because we're now doing area. How are we doing? Ashton? Well, we have these formulas. I think so. Quick double check. Oh, the sector. You have arc length, people, you have arc length and area of a sector, but the minus segment one is not on here. So you'll need to know the minus segment part. It is the longest one. Question four. <laughs> Find the area of the sector of a circle with radius 5.7 centimetres if the length of the arc formed by the sector is 4.2. So this is the radius, but this number that I've been given here is my arc length, and I'm asked to find an area. Okay, so I need to use my arc length formula, which is L equals R theta, to try and find out what the angle is, because I know I need the angle for my sector formula. Okay, so that's why it gave me that arc length, so I could work that out. So using that, the L was 4.2, the radius was 5.7 times the theta. Um, do 4.2 divided by 5.7, and we get theta equals 14 over 19. Best to keep your answers exact if you're going to continue to use that for further calculation. Now that I know my angle, the goal was to find the area of the sector, which is the formula A equals half R squared theta. The radius of the sector is 5.7 so I have to do 5.7 squared and the theta I found out was 14 over 19 and then we can do that one as a decimal I got 11.97 centimeters squared for area everyone okay with that yeah okay Question five, find the area of the minus segment, okay, keyword minus segment, we know that's the big formula, the third one, formed if an angle of pi over four is subtended at the center of a circle of radius eight centimeters. 
So this is my feeder, it's in radians, which is awesome. This is my radius, my formula for a minor segment is half r squared bracket theta minus sine theta. Now, the thing that makes this question slightly more complicated is that it does say here that we definitely need the exact. No going to decimals here. And yes, there is a trig function in there, which is why this is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we need to do this exact. Let's sub in what we have. We have half. R is 8, so 8 squared, bracket, theta is pi over 4, minus sine of pi over 4. Okay, we can't type in our calculators, we need it exact. So first of all, 8 squared is 64, and half of 64, that's 32. So we've tidied that up a little bit. Pi over 4, let's leave that there. Let's talk about this trig function. Sine of pi over 4, remember we kind of prefer degrees. Do you know what degrees that is? 45. That's the same as sine of 45. From your exact value triangle, what is sine 45? 1. Nope. More, well, unless there's more to that. 1 over root 2. So it's 32 bracket pi over 4 minus 1 over root 2. Okay. Okay, working, we're getting there. So now, let's expand that out because 32 pi over 4, we do 32 divided by 4, which is 8. That will simply become 8 pi for the first to expand it out. Timesing the 32 by the minus 1 over root 2 would be minus 32 over root 2. Now, yes, that is the answer. But there's a, probably a slight problem with that answer. What is it? Oh, uh, I think the fraction of rational denominator. Irrational denominator, yeah. So to be extra diligent here, we should rationalise that denominator. So that root 2, we're going to times by root 2 over root 2. So we've got 8 pi minus 32 root 2 on the top. Root 2 times root 2 gets rid of the square root sign to become a whole 2 on the bottom. And then we're able to divide 32 by 2 to get 16. So 8 pi minus 16 root 2 is an exact and most simplified answer for the area of that minus segment. It will be in centimetres squared. All right, one more of these. Question 10. A 100 centimetre piece of wire is bent into a circle and a 10 centimetre piece of wire is joined to it to form a cord. I'm going to draw a diagram so we can see what's going on here. So here is our circle. We know that the circumference of that circle is 100 centimetres. We have a 10 centimetre piece of wire. So a piece of wire is going to go from there to there, say, and it's going to be 10 centimetres long. Okay, the centre of my circle is going to be about there. Find the area of the minor segment. So I'm going to need to maybe draw in the arms of my sector there. And the minor segment means I'm after this part down here. I want that area. Um, it says find that area, correct your two decimal places. Okay, well... To find the area of a minor segment, we know we need that formula A equals half R squared theta minus sine theta. Small problem, we don't have an R and we don't have a theta. We have to find a way to find both of them so that we can use that formula. We do know the circumference of the circle. What's the formula for circumference? Pi R. Correct. So if I use C equals 2 pi R, and the circumference is equal to 100, I would have 100 equals 2 pi r, and I can divide the 2 pi across to get the r by itself. 100 divided by 2 is 50 over pi. Okay, 
So that means this radius here is 50 over pi, and this radius here is 50 over pi. And even though my squiggle's kind of gone through it, that side there was 10 centimeters. I have all three sides of a non-right angle triangle. I need to find that angle. Ideas? Yes. Cosine rule. Three, ang three sides in a triangle and you want to find an angle, you need to use the cosine rule. Yeah, so the formula is, I'll write down the original formula for you, it's cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Okay, that's probably the formula you will hopefully remember. Yeah? Okay, to find the angle. I, however, am trying to find theta, so it's going to be cos theta equals. The B and the C in the formula are the two arms that are on either side of your angle. So if this is the angle that I want, it's going to be the 50 over pi and the 50 over pi. So 50 over pi plus, oops, squared, plus 50 over pi squared. And the one that you subtract is the one that is across from your angle, which is the 10. So minus 10 squared all over two times those 50 over pi's again. So 50 over pi times 50 over pi. Good news, people. It does say we want decimal places. Okay, so from this stage, you can type that into your calculator. All right, I'm not going to expect you to go and rearrange all of that and try and leave it in terms of pi. Type that into your calculator. Shall I tell you what it is? Yes. I got 0 0.8026. And you want to keep, when that's in your calculator, you want to keep that exact. We're not finished yet. Okay? So that is because that's cos theta. To get the angle, you're going to inverse cos. And that comes out to be, oh, wait a second. Actually, you really should do this, guys, because you know why? I need this angle to be in radians. And so when I calculated this, if you put your calculator in radians to do it, it will give you a radians angle here so you don't have to then go and convert it out anyway. If your calculator is in degrees, it's going to give you a degree answer there, which is different. So try, can everyone do this? Can you turn your calculator into radians? Wait, Miss. Yeah, Miss, I cancelled out the. Um uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, and the minus 2AB. You cross them out because wouldn't a squared plus B squared equal 2 lot over... Um, These are pluses. You can't cancel common factors if it's not in all of them. No, as in like if you add the two of them together, it's just 250 over pi. Oh, okay. And then the other one um, of the two... The 250 over pi squared. Is 250 um, over pi squared. Yeah, minus that, so you can just yeah. it out. All right, did you get the same decimal? No. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe try typing mine in. Okay, so type it in, make sure you calculate it in radians. Type the, all this big messy fraction in. Do you get that decimal? Yeah. Excellent. So with your calculator in radians, if you press inverse sign, in, inverse cos, sorry, inverse cos of that answer, you will hopefully get that decimal. Yes, okay, it's small because it's radians, okay, remember one radian is almost 60 degrees, okay, so it's still like a 30 something degree angle there, but radians are small like when it comes to decimals like that, okay, so we then can use that to finally find our area of our minus segment, keep that number in your calculator, don't delete it. Our minus segment formula is half r squared theta minus sine theta. So we finally know the radius, which is 50 over pi, and we have to square that. So that's my half r squared. Then the formula says theta, which is 0 0.6391 minus sine of the 0 0.6391, have a go typing that in, you should get 
to two decimal places, 5.40 centimetres squared. Yeah? Good. Okay, so the formulas themselves I hope are fairly straightforward. Just some of the questions will require you to work out a few things before you're able to use them. And that can be the challenging part. So that's the end of that section, which is 11i. But remember that we also had to talk about 11j today. Now, this shouldn't take long. This is, this is a little exercise kind of on the end here. It's talking about our trig graphs again. Now, we did these in trigonometry, so hopefully these graphs look familiar. The only difference is that they're in radians. So normally the sine graph we go to 360 degrees, which would be there, where the 2 pi is. And the pi would be the 180, pi over 2 is the 90, and the 3 pi over 2 is the 270 degrees. See that sine curve that we're familiar with? Okay, so there's, there it is. It's just using radians on your axes instead of degrees. Okay, so that's all the other, all the other ones are there as well. So the cos curve... Guys, not finished. Ben? The cos curve starts from one and does a full rotation by 360 degrees, which is 2 pi. Our tan curve, which has the asymptotes, um, the first one is at 90 degrees, and then another 180 degrees after that, which is 270, and it does that lovely little wiggle pattern for the tan curve. Do you remember the graphs of cosec second cot? Nope. Now, to get them, that's always fun to get them. Do you remember, like, cosec is 1 over sine. You do remember that part, right? Yeah. yeah? So if I take my sine graph, everywhere where there is a zero turns into an asymptote. So there's an asymptote at minus 2 pi there. There's an asymptote. Every, every time that the sine curve is zero becomes an asymptote. Everywhere where the sine graph is one, one over one stays as one. So it's going to stay here. These are all going to stay at one. Any time where it's negative one, one over negative one is negative one. So all these turning point here, they all stay where they are. The interesting part is what happens as we get close to those asymptotes. So let's choose this one here to start with, okay? If this number is super, super small, like let's say 0.1, 1 divided by 0.1 is 10. I mean, it's quite big up here, right? And same here, if that would be 0.1, then that's 1 over 1.1 is going to be really big up here. So it starts really big, comes down to that turning point, and goes back up again. And all that happens is for the negative ones, they go the other way. And that is the cosec graph that you see down below. Okay, so that's how you do cosec second cot. You're doing one over the sine, cos, and tan graph. Okay, now the things that you're going to have to answer, let me try and get rid of all this stuff that I've got on here. The things that you're going to have to answer about these graphs in your exercise are things like what kind of function is y equals sine x? Is it one to one? Is it one to many? Is it many to one? Or is it many to many? Who can remember? Many to one. It is many to one, correct. So let's write that as an example. This is a many to one. The first word is always referring to the x axis, the second word is always referring to the y axis. So there is many x values that produce the same y value. Okay, what many to one means. Okay. Um, coincidentally, what do you think the cos graph is? What do you think the tan graph is? What do you think the cosec graph is? They are actually all. All six of your trig graphs are many to one. So that's interesting. Okay, what about words like this? What is the period of the sine x graph? What does the word period mean? Um, Not when I was doing English. Uh, full, uh, always. Yes, the full rotation of the curve. So if the curve starts here, it does a full rotation to get to there, which is 2 pi. So let's write that down there. The 
period of that curve is, right. oh it does, oh there you go, it's 2 pi. <laughs> the amplitude, I can say that too then, the amplitude is 1 and it's an odd function. What is, have you heard this word before, translational symmetry? No. Translational symmetry is kind of talking about the period again. It is how far could I translate that graph to have it be the same graph again? 2 pi. Two pi. If I move it 2 pi to the left or 2 pi to the right, it's going to be back to the same curve again. Okay, so that's translational symmetry. Um, one more thing. Where is the graph symmetrical? Now let me write that one up here. Where is the sine graph there? Symmetrical. What did you say, Ron? 90 degrees, excellent. So at 90 degrees, symmetrical means I can fold that graph in half over the y-axis, like over the y values here. And where is it going to be? If you put a mirror there, where is the same on the inside? So at 90 degrees, which we're going to say pi over 2 though, because we are using radians. So at pi over 2, it is the exact same on that side as it is on that side, right? Anywhere with it, so there, just put another one up here. Right? What about down here? Is that symmetrical on the inside? Yeah. So there's lots of them. There's pi over 2, there's 3 pi over 2, and there's 5 pi over 2, and all the negative ones. Negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 5 pi over 2. So they're just the ones that are shown on that graph, but yes, it would be infinite intervals of pi. Okay? So I'll just write down the ones that are there. x equals pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and it will be positive or negative.